Yes, hello, welcome to the Magnus Effect video. First thing we're going to do is to make a wind tunnel, a virtual wind tunnel, and we want it to be about three meters long. So um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, you see here's a scale of 0.7 meters, so we want three meters to uh, take up the whole block here. So I'm just going to zoom uh, in just a little bit. and. Uh, that should be about right. So now I'm going to, the intersection of these two red lines is the zero, zero point. This is just a two-dimensional animation uh, that we're going to do, or a simulation rather. Okay, so here's a zero, zero point that you're seeing now. So now I'm going to make a tunnel that's three meters long by uh, one meter high. So I'm going to use this box. I'm going to get down to the, this is a zero, zero point, and here you can see the x and y coordinates that will help us determine the length. So I'm starting at zero, zero, and I'm going to make it one meter high. So you can see the y coordinate, as soon as it, or the z coordinate, as soon as it reaches about one, it doesn't have to be exact for this project, then I'm just going to move over about three meters. Okay, uh, looks like a, 2.7 meters is going to be it, okay? So again, I was looking at these uh, coordinates here. It gave us the x-coordinate. Well, it's about 2 meters long. And the z, it's about... The x went from 0 to 2.7, okay? All right, so now we have... This is our virtual wind tunnel. Now we're going to put our, uh, our cylinder inside. So I'm going to this tool right here, which will give us a circle. I'm going to place it near the entry. And I don't want it to snap to the grid because I want to put it right in the center. Uh, so maybe like about there. And it's going to be uh, each one of these little, this thing that says size here, it tells us that each one of these little rectangles is 0.1 meters across. So I want the, the, um, the cylinder to be 0.2 meters in diameter, so I'm going to put it right about here, like that. It's going to be the center. So there you can see now it's about 0.2 meters in diameter. And agree, yes, put it into a new block. Okay, this. so now it's about 0.2 meters in diameter, which is exactly what we need. Alright, so now what we need to do is we need to make a mesh around our cylinder. So go to Mesh, and uh, uh, recall that the uh, finer the mesh, the more accurate. But if you make it, uh, the mesh too fine, it'll take too long to run. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just select the area of the cylinder, okay? And then I'm going to tell it that I want the, the number of nodes spacing. Now, see these are nodes here. It's going to make mesh around those. So I want the, uh, those to be locked, and I want the target number, target node spacing, just from trial and error I found that for this particular project, about one millimeter should, is about the target node spacing. We can make it a little bit smaller, let's make it 0.005. Okay, so it's about half a millimeter, now I'm going to apply it, and leave everything else the same, and just compute. And just uh, it'll correct everything, just agree to everything. It's computing the mesh now. It's taking it just a little bit. It's crunching away. Okay, and there we go. And you can see we've got about uh, 26,000, close to 27,000 elements. All right. And you can see that the elements are very, very tiny in the area close to the cylinder, which is, we're interested in capturing what happens close to the cylinder, where all the changes are happening, you want a finer mesh. Okay, so ideally we would have, so I'm just gonna, zooming back out. So ideally, you would, we would probably want a finer mesh extending back in the wake, but this is good enough for our project now. So I'm just gonna, Okay, there we go. So there's our mesh. And now what we're going to do is, uh, sometimes it's hard to get the cursor back. 
see I can get rid of that magnifying glass so I'll just go back to geometry and we got it back all right so now I'm just gonna shrink it just a little bit more all right there we go so now I want to go to uh, we did just just did mesh right and uh, now we go to the physics tab and here we tell it what the fluid is going to be and we're just going to leave everything as default here's the air and you've got density dynamic viscosity thermal conductivity in case you want to calculate a Reynolds number here you've got the density and the viscosity here uh, all right so what we're going to do now is just going to go to boundary conditions and now first thing we're going to do is we're going to tell it what the inlet is so I'm going to click on this wall here all right hit new region and we're going to give it a speed of five meters per second coming in all right we apply and Oops, I should have made that an inlet. Inlet boundary condition, okay. Five meters per second, apply. There we go. All right, so now we're going to click on this boundary, new region, and we're going to make that an outlet. Outlet, it's just going to be a conservative outlet where it's just going to be conservation of, uh, of mass. We apply, and there it is. Now we want to make these top and the bottom one hold shift to do both two at one time new region and those are going to be uh, normally uh, the uh, things are, are walls with a zero velocity but we're going to make a special designation for these walls which is going to be a symmetry plane which means there's going to be no friction on it and the flow is going to be parallel to the walls so we hit apply here so now we got frictionless walls there so they don't interfere all right, so made those symmetry planes. Now the only thing left to do is to specify uh, this one. The cylinder, new region, and we're going to make that a wall also. Now, uh, if you wanted, wanted just a cylinder that wasn't that it was stationary, you could just leave the speed at zero. And, uh, and uh, But if we want the walls to, have, to be moving, we want them to be rotating. You, uh, let's make it we want them to be moving at minus five meters per second the negative means it's going to be spinning in the clockwise direction hit apply okay you can see the little arrow show you the direction in which it's spinning okay so now we have a uh, it's got a tangential speed of five meters per second the incoming speed is five meters per second as well so uh, now we're uh, Ready to uh, calculation parameters. Cisco had increase the num maximum number of iterations to 1,000, just in case. Uh, and just hit enter. And now we just go to solver and run it. Now, okay, that's all we really need to do at this point. And uh, okay, there we go. So now you hit solve, and it's going to run. Okay, so it's you can see you've got the residuals on this axis, which essentially tell you how close you are to getting an acceptable solution. So the residual should be diving down to around 5 times 10 to the minus 5. And at that point, uh, the calculation will stop. So let's see what happens. So this is just a really fine mesh near the, um, near the cylinder, so it's taking a little bit longer to run. Now, uh, they're not diving down yet, but OK. so. Okay, they're starting to dive down. So this is the iteration number over here. It's done 125 loops. We're trying to find a solution. Okay, what it's doing now is it's guessing values of velocities and pressures and flow direction uh, in each cell. And it's coming up with, uh, at each cell, which is the uh, cell is the space inside, a, inside the mesh, right? We've got, uh, I forget how many thousands was it, like 27,000. Uh, it's got to uh, have the um, all the conservation equations have to be met at each cell. Summation of forces equals ma uh, for the fluid inside each cell. M, m dot in is equal to m dot out at each cell. And the result is you get uh, like uh, at least five differential equations at each cell that have to be solved simultaneously, and it's solving these simultaneous equations now uh, by a trial and error process, and the residuals tell you, so it's guessing values, so it's getting down low enough, it's going to stop soon. So it's guessing values of velocity and pressure at each cell, 
and when the residuals get down low enough, and we'll talk about more more about what the residuals are, but when they, uh, it's th basically the difference between the left-hand side and the right-hand side on each equation. So when that gets close enough to zero, the program stops, which it did already, okay? So now we want to see our results, so we go to the post-processing tab here, and uh, first I want to see the force on our cylinder. So we'll go to the analysis tab, and you select the cylinder, which was uh, this one here, region 4, and you can see here it gives you the force in the X is 2.39 newtons, and the force in the Z direction that's up and down is 5.2 newtons. I'm sorry, that was 2.4 newtons in the X direction and 5.2 newtons in the Z direction. So we are generating a lift. Now we can also see the, uh, the streamline, uh, the vectors showing the velocity. So I'm going to click here on vectors show and just hit apply and there they are we can zoom in on them and and you can see the flow pattern is uh, we're getting you can see the, the uh, separation zone here you've got a vor vortex going like this and then you've got a vortex going in the other direction here so you can, uh, there, are, there are an awful lot of vectors being shown, so you can reduce the number of them. Let's reduce them. Apply. Okay, so now it's a, just maybe a little bit clearer now. So here you can pan with this tool here. And uh, so here it is. Now you take a look at the difference in velocities here. Let's show the... Uh, Let's show the contours for the velocity. It's going to show us hit shaded, so it'll show us a, uh, shaded contours. And it's going to show us a scale to hit apply. And there we go. So we can see at the top we've got a flow velocity of like 10.8 meters per second. And at the bottom it's going slower, right, because of the rotation of the cylinder. Okay, so this is all you need to, uh, if you wanted to just run a cylinder now, with, uh, let me zoom back out. Let's say you wanted to do another run now at this point. All you'd have to do is, you don't need to remesh, you just need to go back to, uh, uh, just need to go back to boundary conditions, right? And you could go to your cylinder, which is this one here, and instead of, say you wanted to change the velocity to 7 meters per second, right? You would do it here and apply it and just rerun it. No need to remesh it. Just go back to uh, Solver and rerun it. And you could do the same thing for just a plain cylinder, right? Okay, so you can restart the calculation. So uh, hit yes here, hit OK, and just solve and it'll just start again. Okay, so you just have to wait for it. Alright, so I think that's enough uh, for you to uh, do the project. All right. So if you want to, uh, if you want to save it, let me stop it. I think I already stopped it. So go back to problem definition, and you can go up to here to project, and you can save it as uh, whatever. Pick a folder name, and hit apply. Uh, okay. Okay. So I'm not going to save this, but that's how you do it. Okay. So this is the end of the video, and let me exit. Uh, I'm not saving to the project. And now I need to stop the video and I uh, forgot how to do that.